Hello guys, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Is Russia in Europe? That is the question for today's live stream. And I have today a guest, another American like myself, who lives in St. Petersburg. So I live in Moscow, he lives in St. Petersburg. Together we will talk and us Americans will decide, is Russia in Europe or not? Uh, just kidding with you guys. Of course, we're just talking. We're gonna talk about what we've learned as foreigners in this giant country and you can send us questions hopefully you've done that already welcome to expat american i am the expat american and without further ado here he is this guy you see his name it is brandon he is obviously younger than i uh, perhaps he's josiah's age i'm not sure and before we get started i asked brandon to send two clips of himself if he could find them the first clip I deemed a waste of your time. But here's the second clip. You'll watch this first, and then he can explain to us what this clip means and who he is. My favorite question, who are you? So here we go. Americans, who are coming to Russia, and many of you are asking me, why I'm four years old. I'm coming to Peter in the hope to meet a girl with whom we have met in America. Unfortunately, this didn't happen. I was alone, I didn't know the language, and I had a job. But I was afraid to get into this city and people. In America, they told me that the Russians are bad and aggressive, but as it turned out, they were friendly to me, with the respect of the government. И уважением. Я начал изучать язык, завел новые друзей. Несмотря на суровые зимы, я влюбился в город, атмосферу людей в свою жизнь. Сегодня мне окружает удивительная группа людей, мои студенты, офлайн разговорный клуб, онлайн разговорный клуб, потрясающая девушка русская и я лучший преподаватель носитель английского языка. All right, there we go. So, Brandon, tell us who are you? in relation to this video topic and in relation to the video we just saw, which was in Russian and fast paced. So all of my American audience, which is like 30%, they might be a little confused right now. That's right. They're probably a little confused. So, uh, hey guys. Yeah. Like Joe said, my name's Brandon. Uh, thank you, Joe, for, you know, bringing me on your live stream today. Uh, I used to watch your videos a lot more than what I do now. Unfortunately, just, it's a matter of time. So I've been a fan for over, over a year now, I'd say. I, I forget exactly how I found your channel. But, you know, occasionally on the YouTube algorithm, some Americans in Russia videos pop up and then you're always a little bit interested. So, yeah. And, you know, Joe puts in the, the time and energy and effort to make, you know, good quality videos for you guys and tries to, you know, spread awareness. And so I kind of do the same thing a little bit. Uh, but just through another platform, Instagram, <clears throat> Joe focuses on YouTube, long form content. And I kind of focus more on short form content, uh, because for me and what I do here, that's the best. So yeah, I'm 27. I was born and raised in West Virginia and, uh, I moved to St. Petersburg almost five years ago to this day. It was, uh, August, oh, I'm sorry. It was April 16th, 2019. So it was almost five years ago. The five year reunion is in two days. So yeah, I mean, wow. I moved here about five years ago because no long story short was in college. I had a, a girlfriend whose name was Anastasia and she was from Otter Hungist, but she studied in St. Petersburg at the time. And she was on like one of those uh, like foreign exchange programs where she got a visa to study in the U S for a year. And uh, yeah, we started like uh, hanging out, started dating a little bit. And so she kind of like, introduced me to St. Petersburg just through photos and videos. And then when she had to move back here, you know, she would always send me videos and stuff like that. So I became really interested in, you know, the city and checking it out. And so I did that. And, uh, you know, this is my second uh, term in St. Petersburg. I was here for a year and a half from 2019 until late 2020, left, went back to the U.S., worked a little bit. And then, uh, you know, I was bored working my uh, typical office job. And I decided, you know, uh, this really isn't bringing me happiness, you know, the, like the, the surroundings, like the area and everything like that. And so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to try to do this again and try to do it in a better way and move back to St. Petersburg. Um, Moscow was never on my radar. I just always felt like it was just too big of a city for me. I felt like I would have no spare time for anything like that. Maybe Joe can spread some uh, awareness to me on if that's true or not. It was just my interpretation based on 
how many metro stations there are and just how w wide and vast. I will. Is. You're wrong, Brandon. It's time for an argument on this show. It's been too long. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's basically it. Uh, right now I'm an English teacher here. Um, and you know, I have a decent little Instagram page where I have a, a decent amount of followers where, you know, where I make the videos in Russian, like you saw, it helps me get a Russian audience. And so that way, you know, I have my page all set up to where, um, I try to educate the Russian Federation on the English language. And I work here through a language center and also teach online a little bit. So yeah, so we'll, we'll get all into that. But yeah, that for the introduction, I think that's pretty much it, Joe. So thank you. Okay, very good. So guys, it looks like I discovered a younger version of myself living in St. Petersburg, a fun guy with shorter videos that you can enjoy on a different platform. <laughs> um, so be sure and send us some questions as soon as you can so we can ask this guy about his life here as a foreigner, as an American, a guy from West Virginia, <laughs> and uh, see what life is like in St. Petersburg. You know more what it's like in moscow if you're just watching this show from afar because you're you're watching me and please go find him i'm going to put if i haven't already his instagram links in the description oh, i'm sure you. i did but if not thank when we hang up i will a question i have for you is your girlfriend's from where Were well your girlfriend at the time is at that you? time yeah five six years ago already uh, she was born and raised in arhangisk you know, up near Murmansk, I suppose, but uh, she was studying in St. Petersburg at the time. So, but now we're not together, totally broken up. And I've had a couple of uh, intermediary girlfriends in between, but now I have one stable one that was in the video there towards the end that you might've seen, so. Okay, okay, all right, interesting. So the, the I was gonna ask you about that. So the girl we see towards the end yep. is your girlfriend now. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the current, uh, GF right now. So yeah. Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Yeah. Very cool. So we have an audience question. Fantastic. Why do you have a wisp, wet Midwestern, I can't talk, Midwestern vernacular when you grew up in West Virginia? Do you think I have a Midwestern vernacular? Do, do... Well, YouTube user does and yeah. YouTube user must know. Well, YouTube user, yes, must know, right? Because people on the internet know. I, I don't know, mid uh, YouTube user, unfortunately. Um, I just speak how I speak. I'm probably, I'm, I'm certain that Joe feels the same way. Um, I'm sure, Joe, you've also encountered uh, some people in Russia where when you speak to them in English, they think that you're from another place, not either not the US or maybe a different state. But when you maybe told them, oh, I'm from Florida, or whatever, then they're a little bit shocked, right? Has that ever happened to you? Um, yes, uh, people get confused on my accent. And I've mm -hmm. said before on this show that um, I grew up in a place with a country Southern accent mm -hmm. and I had that to a degree, but my parents were from Miami, which is like mm -hmm. Miami, although it's very Southern on the map, it's mm -hmm. a more Northern talking place. Mm -hmm. um, so I had this weird mix and mm -hmm. I, then I went uh, to university in New York and then studied, you know, did film in Hollywood in California. So I kind of, I learned in bumping into different people in America that they couldn't yeah. quite understand me that well. So I, I, I had to kind of train myself to have a very plain American mm -hmm. accent. And then I, I did that. I've done that even more so with this show, because mm -hmm. if I start to relax and just mm -hmm. talk like I did when I was 17, people yeah. start saying, what, huh? They don't yeah. understand me. So <clears throat> I find that I have to slow it down and yep. talk very clear. And I think I would guess that anyone in my position and yours would, would do that at least subconsciously, if not on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what do you think? Well, you know, since I'm an English teacher here and most of the Russians I might meet, you know, outside at cafes, restaurants or bars, you know, of course, in St. Petersburg and Moscow, uh, a lot more people speak English to a decent level compared to smaller cities. But I've had to train myself to speak a little bit slower for my students and for the people I just meet. And I almost have to simplify and dumb down my speech because you can't use some of the vocabulary or terminology you might use with a native speaker because I, I get a little bit exhausted when I do use like advanced vocabulary or some idioms or some expressions. And then 
every time they ask, what does that mean? Or can you explain that to me? And at some moments, I just don't want to really like explain anything. I would just like to speak. So um, for the most part um, here, I've had to really, you know, kind of dumb down my speech a little bit and speak at a slower pace, almost like you're kind of speaking to a child. But um, I, but I, I don't mind doing that because I hope that Russians would kind of do the same thing to me when I speak Russian, right? Because sometimes right. when you meet some Russians, you go to a bar or something like that, you're like, okay, I've been studying Russian a lot recently. I feel like I've improved my listening and speaking. And then the bartender just speaks very quickly or you hear some young 20-year-olds or teenagers speaking and you're like, damn, I don't understand a word they're saying, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then you have to ask them, like, can you repeat that? Or can you get, repeat it a little bit more slowly? So no, just, you know, it comes with the territory. So um, right, 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 right. So guys, I want to remind you to click share right now and send this out to your friends. We get more people in the live joining us and asking us questions. They're starting to come in now. We appreciate that. So just to recap and be sure everyone understands, you had a girlfriend, you mm -hmm. came here to visit her, here being St. Petersburg. You liked it. You went back to America. You tried to live your life, but you you had the itch. You had the bug. You liked mm -hmm. St. Petersburg. So you decided to come live in St. Petersburg and you have been living here as an English tutor and you use mm -hmm. Instagram to promote that. Is that correct? Yeah. That That's almost correct. Let, let me break this down a little and go a little bit more in depth here. So we actually broke up before I moved to St. Petersburg five mm -hmm. years ago. So mm -hmm. the idea was before we broke up was that I would get uh, a TEFL certification, like teaching English as a foreign language online. And then after right. I complete that, which took around two to three months, I forget exactly. Um, then I would be able to apply for the visa. This was spring 2019, but we split up in between that time. And I was working at a bank. This was my first year post-college graduation. Mm -hmm. So I was working right. at a bank and I was just like, well, I've already invested a little bit of time and energy and my money into this, I might as well just go through with it and just spend one year there, right? Like 2019 to the end of 2020 or something like that. Get that experience, right. maybe, you know, travel to some other countries in Europe and stuff like that, since I'll be a lot closer and it'll be cheaper. And so I was like, okay, for one year, I can just pack my bags, go live abroad in St. Petersburg, like for, forget the girl, forget the girl. Um, she's going to do her own thing. I'll do my own thing, you know, but I just want to get this experience regardless and uh, so, yeah, so I came here five years ago and yeah, we were not together. We were not in contact at all. In fact, I just decided to take the high road and just kind of like unfollow and block on, on social medias and WhatsApp and everything like that. Just that way I could like start fresh and everything mm -hmm. like that. So, um, yeah, when I came here, just I was not connected with her in any way. I was totally here by myself. Didn't speak the language at all. Couldn't hardly read the alphabet. So um, all of the Russian I have learned has um, come to me since being here, you know, I've had to spend a lot of hours on YouTube, um, watching YouTube tutorials back in the day, uh, pick up some little basic books for foreigners, Russian language for foreigners, like beginners. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. So from April, 2019 until October, 2020 post COVID stayed here through COVID. Um, mm -hmm. you know, don't say that word, Brandon. Oh, so I stayed here through uh, the <laughs> pandemic. I don't know. You mean that, that, that medical event, that international yeah. medical event that lasted for two years? That big event that happened, uh, you know, in <laughs> March 2020. Stayed here th throughout that. And then in October 2020. Now, I, I did get a girlfriend during that time, a new girlfriend. And uh, we split up in August. So we were together for maybe six months-ish. And so mm -hmm. I, I figured after that, I was like, you know, I'm not making – this was before the Instagram, by the way, before doing anything on Instagram, this, I was just totally working here doing like kind of like odd jobs, like getting paid under the table a little bit, just through companies. I would go teach, teach a little bit online, but not even to Russian students for the most part. So I wasn't, you know, making a stable salary in order for me to continue living here. So I was like, okay, I got to pack it up and go back home. And, um, I did that and, you know, started working again, another like office job there. And that was from November, 2020 until August or September 2021. And then, you know, in July, when I, June, whatever, I decided to just do this again, but get a work visa. That way I would have at least a stable salary of, let's say, 100,000 rubles a month. Um, and then that, that the idea was, is that I would come back, you know, a little bit more 
with with a safety pillow, you know, that I would have, you know, a stable salary and a more stable uh, work. And so that's what I did. And so I've been here on a work visa ever since. I just get it renewed each year through my school. And, you know, I started Instagram about a year ago because I saw everyone started doing Instagram, making these short videos. And, you know, I knew that, okay, if I'm one of the last Americans here in St. Petersburg and in Russia in general, I just got to make something, right? Just some sort of content, just walk outside, just talk about how beautiful the city is and, you know, how life here is pretty cool overall. It's pretty chill. People are nice. And so I just started doing that, interviewing people on the streets, doing like those English street interviews, uh, giving the chocolate out if they get the right answer and uh, did some English camps in the summer, recorded videos there, posted that. So after some time, you know, it took four or five months and then I finally, yeah, one video blew up and then uh, that really helped me get like 10,000 new followers over the course of two weeks. So that kind of helped propel like everything. And now I'm in a good stable position right now. And uh, live on Nevsky, Joe. You know Nevsky. You walked along Nevsky with your wife, so oh, 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 the street is what you live on. I thought you were referring yeah. to a computer platform. I had no knowledge of. <laughs> no, Nevsky, Nevsky Prospect. Nevsky Prospect. So everything's good now. So that I hope that kind of summarized everything a little bit more in depth for you and for the audience. Yeah, yeah, I hope. yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. And I have some questions. I'm sure they do too. But let's mm -hmm. take a question on today's video topic: Is Russia yeah. in Europe? So. Yeah. Svetlana, who is a, a, a fan and and, uh, and and not a fan of the show from time to time, depending upon <laughs> whatever use, has asked, Russia is not of Europe, nor of Asia. It's not even a country as such. It's an entire civilization. What are your thoughts about that? So what do you think, Brandon? Is this a fair definition? Maybe we can get your opinion first, Joe. Uh, no, sure, uh, I sure. can yeah, go ahead, Joe. You answer this question first, and then I'll <laughs> piggyback off you. I like it. Um, I, it's very good because it is complex, you know, and it's hard to define things. I mean, as humans, we like to define things. It's in yeah. Genesis, you know, we name yeah. things. We And we do, to a degree, have to classify things. Mm -hmm. So it makes us feel comfortable if we can say Russia is Europe or Russia is Asia or yeah. Russia is its own thing. Yeah. Um, so Russia is not Europe, nor of Asia. It's not even a country as such. So I, I, can, I can get that, that you would say that Western Europe is Europe mm -hmm. and China and, and those other countries, that's mm -hmm. Asia. And Russia is just kind of sitting in the middle. Yeah. And yeah, it's technically on the same land mass, but it is big enough and unique enough to be called its own civilization. I think mm -hmm. that's fair. And yeah. I kind of like that. And I never thought about it in that perspective before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so those are my thoughts right now. What do you yeah. think, Brent? Yeah, I, I think I, I second that opinion right there. Russia is essentially like its own entity, right? It's smush mm -hmm. in between Western Europe and uh, Asia there. And it's going to be really interesting. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan in a month and a half. And I will also travel throughout Uzbekistan and potentially Kazakhstan. I'm not one. 100% sure on Kazakhstan yet, but Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan are on uh, are on my radar. So I'll, I'm interested in checking out these post-Soviet Union countries to understand where they're at right now in terms of you know architecture and uh, the culture there in general. But um, yeah, I mean the way Svetlana put it, uh, it, it's really true. I mean Russia is just so large, man, like the largest country on this planet, and uh, it's really hard to say that it's Europe. Of course, we can say St. Petersburg is, it, what do they say? St. Petersburg is the, the bridge to Europe or something like that. So- uh, it's um, The window to Europe. The window to Europe, exactly. So Man, and, yes. come on, Brandon. You're my expert in is Russia in Europe and you don't even know that expression? <laughs> the window to, <laughs> to Europe. So St. Petersburg is the closest thing that resembles European you know, architecture and everything like that. And of course, I, I think you might know this and maybe the audience might, I'm not sure, but I, as far as I understand, you know, some of the architects who designed and planned out how the city was going to be, uh, you know, designed and laid out, they were from France and from it Italy. So uh, of course we can say St. Petersburg is very European style. And you can tell by the way people dress here and the way uh, people conduct themselves. Um, but for the rest of Russia, I mean, I, I can't say that, you know, uh, some city in the eastern part of Russia is Europe. We can't. I don't think we can really say that. So, 
it's difficult, right? So I think Svetlana is right. right. Svet Russia is just in its own lane of sorts. Mm -hmm. Well, she has she has an interesting hypothesis. I don't know if I'm going to give her the credit of saying she's completely right. <laughs> um, so, uh, so Peter the First or Peter the Great, he was the leader of Russia um, a while back, and he, I, you know, he sailed a lot, so he was a good naval guy. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm not an expert on this guy, so you can mm -hmm. you can correct me. Uh, but he liked Europe, and mm -hmm. so he founded St. Petersburg, which is not named after him, but named yeah. after Peter from the Bible. Um, and he, you know, set about building St. Petersburg, I believe, to look a little bit like Western yeah. Europe. Yeah. And also it was a port, which is going to, you know, yeah. you're going to have goods coming and going between yeah. St. Petersburg and Europe, yeah. something like that. But I'm sure the audience will correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and as an American, you know, I don't... Um, I've been confused on whether or not Russia is considered technically in Europe, mm -hmm. um, because even when I met Svetlana and we were, yeah. we were, uh, you know, dancing at this party in Texas, um, yeah. and, and I, I, I looked at her and I said, you know, maybe I'll come to Europe someday. Yeah. And that disappointed her because she thought someday Europe, you know, to her someday sounded like a long time and Europe didn't sound like Russia and she's a right. Russian. So it is a weird classification because in some context, in some language, people talk like Russia is in Europe. In other language, they talk like it's not in Europe. Often right. on my show for Americans, I, I'll, I'll be walking around on the street and it's beautiful. And I say, look, it's like Europe. And mm -hmm. people get irritated, Russians, and they'll say, it is Europe. What are mm -hmm. you talking about? I mean, I know technically it is Europe. Mm -hmm. I'm just for an American. I'm trying to express to them. It's not like Western Europe is what you see in Hollywood movies about Europe or BBC shows and Russia's yeah. like cold, dark, depressed, scary state. It, yeah. it looks the same. I mean, I've yeah. got video that you gave me of a, just a random street in St. Petersburg. You look past our heads and look at it, guys. You know, does this look like, if you're an American, what you were taught Russia looked like? But, in, but Joe, you know, we, we both... Time. We both know that St. Petersburg and Moscow, it's not all of Russia. And you've been to many places in Russia. And you know <laughs> that you you probably would not live in some random town in the middle of Russia where it it's probably not – it's most certainly not as beautiful. It's smaller. It's more boring. Just those boring gray blocks of flats. So I, I do have to say we do kind of live in the St. Petersburg and Moscow bubble. Uh -huh. um, but <sighs> – man Go ahead, the, tell me tell us what do you well, think well, you know well, why is it that you and i decided to stay here right and you live in moscow and there's a lot of european style architecture in moscow and then obviously saint petersburg was kind of founded based off that right but mm -hmm. we kind of for us i think at least this is like the land of the fair like this is like the fairy tale land right here these beautiful mm -hmm. buildings and everything like that we saw it in those books you know of course we don't have castles or anything here like in germany or austria but for me, it's kind of like I'm walking through the fairy tale. And when you have beautiful architecture, and especially the downtown area, downtown, mm -hmm. it, it represents the whole city, right? It, it mm -hmm. determines like from when tourists come in and when, when other foreigners come in, how they view the whole entire like city and country, right? And when you go to like, I don't know, there's just a, we feel, at least I feel, and you, you can probably like comment on this too, but I feel like I, I at least feel a better connection to the architecture here because I can almost understand the time and the energy and the efforts. People died making these buildings, man. Like they froze out in the winters building these beautiful buildings, you know. And uh, I feel like it's just different with all of these skyscrapers in America. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, we can recognize that, you know, skyscrapers are cool. But it's just there's no like true like connection or value we, we can really connect to with skyscrapers if that makes sense you know with european style architecture you can just kind of feel it and you feel more comfortable you feel like uh you're walking through like i said the fairy tale or something like that you feel like you're walking through the past and something like that what do you think no no it's you're right it's art um mm -hmm. 
whereas a skyscraper might look more like you know brutal architecture just very geometric and just you know designed mm -hmm. to be what it needs to be just a place for people to live or work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and as, as far as um you know places outside of saint petersburg and moscow you can find all types you can find crappy places or yeah. let's say bad places sorry people yeah you can find good places you can find some pretty nice places sure um i i think it's just like the u.s it's sure. the same in the u.s where you have more people there's more choices and there, and you'll find more nice things it's denser mm -hmm. and there's more tax dollars and you can put more into the city and where yeah. there's less people there's less nice things mm -hmm. and you're from west virginia I, I mean, I'm, you, I, I know the parts of the world you live in. And I know if you get on the train and, and go the wrong direction for an hour or two, you can go through some pretty ugly looking places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. not just today. I'm talking 20 years ago. You know, yeah, the yeah. U.S. always had their bad places, just like yeah. Russia. And I yeah. think Russia, though, is having less bad places as time goes by. I put yeah. a video uh, off of YouTube that a subscriber suggested this morning on my Telegram channel. And it shows Kazan, um, mm -hmm. pictures of what it used to look like 16 mm -hmm. years ago, and mm -hmm. then pictures of what it looks like today. It's mm -hmm. incredible. It's mm -hmm. amazing. I went mm -hmm. to Kazan, by the way. The playlist is not Moscow. And I went to your place, St. Petersburg. The playlist is St. Petersburg. Um, Good plug. But yeah, I think that uh, I'm very happy where I live, and you're very happy where you live. I, Your place, I think, would be better than my place, except it's just colder and more humid that's my personal opinion um and you could probably why don't you do the reverse for me well I, I, honestly i check moscow the the weather in moscow every day and it matches up identically with the weather in saint petersburg for the most part yeah i agree right. with you it's uh about the humidity here <clears> and <throat> also the wind because of the baltic sea i think that uh the wind here is probably uh stronger uh mm -hmm. but overall man when i went to moscow it was halloween yeah last year halloween it was brutal man it was uh i think it was like negative oh in i don't know what to even say like fahrenheit or celsius but let's say fahrenheit okay it was like maybe 15 fahrenheit or something mm -hmm. like that and it was pretty cold so i would say there's not a major difference between like the weather between St. Petersburg and Moscow in general. Like, of course, if we compare to Sochi, um, then there's there's a massive difference, obviously. But um, overall, it's cold, right? It's it's cold. It's dark. You know, winter here for me, it starts in October and it goes mm -hmm. all the way until March. So that's five, five months, five solid months of your life, five or six months that's just gone right there, you know, and uh now, the question is, is, Joe, do you foresee yourself living here when you're 65 years old? Why wouldn't I? I don't know. Okay, I'll give you more. So I am going to be 50 in September. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I had the dream home a couple of times. And according to average life expectancy, I will... Uh, be dead in like 29 years, 28 years, something like that, according to average. Life yeah. expectancy. I'm not yeah. depressing myself. I'm not saying I will be, mm -hmm. but, and how long will I be active? 10 yeah. years, you know? And, and I, I'm even taking my health a little bit more seriously at the moment because mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be 50 soon. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, what that means is I probably have months until I no longer look like an average age person because I still mm -hmm. look like a quote regular looking aged mm -hmm. guy, right? Yeah. So yep. I probably have months so I look like old man guy, which is fine. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with being old man guy, especially mm -hmm. you know as a guy, you can look old. It's fine. But I I, I realized you know I'm not going to be on this plan forever. Right. I want to enjoy it. And I think 10, 20 years ago. I really, it was on, it was one of my missions to have the great place to live. Like, this is the place, this is my home. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like, I don't know if I'll ever want that again. Because, I mean, maybe if I get to the point where I, it's hard for me to move around. But now it's like, you know, because I'm doing this show and I'm going to different cities and I'm seeing all these great things. 
And now it's like, even when I go somewhere, like I just went to Tula while I was sick a couple of days ago yeah. and I did some Tula stuff real quick for the first time. And now I'm starting to realize as I go to each place, you know, I may never come here again. Right. And now I could, I could go to Tula four times a year if I want to, but if I'm going to Tula four times a year, I'm not going to new places mm -hmm. and I got to decide what do I want to see? And so as you see, it builds up in my head and I realized, you know, do, will I ever have the ultimate place? Do I want the ultimate place or do I want to take the time that I have left mm -hmm. since I have an opportunity with this show to see as many wonderful places as I can? Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I'm grateful that your city exists as it does. Mm -hmm. So clean, so nice. Mm -hmm. Because when I moved here, it was before the special military operation, mm -hmm. eight days before, as I like to say. And the mm -hmm. idea, one of the ideas was we're going to come to Russia and we're going to be closer to Europe, right? Yeah. We're already in Europe, but I'm thinking Western Europe. I'm thinking, yeah. so here's one of the benefits. Yeah, I won't get to go to Disney World anymore, but... I'll be so close to Western Europe and I'll get to see all these places more often. Well, then the special military operations started. Mm -hmm. And yet, technically, I could go there, but I'm not sure if it's just the best idea to be crossing, you know, a, you know, that zone on a regular basis, even if yeah. I'm going around. And, and so all of a sudden I'm here, but what I thought I'd get to do, I can't do. But what I'm reminded every time I go to your city, and if you're a foreigner, if you're not from Russia, let's say, if you're watching this, you've never been to this part of the world, I challenge someone, tell me, what does Western Europe have over St. Petersburg? Mm -hmm. I cannot see the difference in, the stere in your stereotypical idea of wonderful Western Europe. Mm -hmm. Go to St. Petersburg and look around. It mm -hmm. is better. I'm not saying it's always been better, but today it's better. It's yeah. just as nice. In fact, it's clean and it's safe. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Yeah. Good Good thoughts right there. Yeah. I, I agree with uh, pretty much everything you said right there. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we stay here too, is that we, we feel, you know, quite safe and quite comfortable uh, mm -hmm. when, you know, you walk outside and go to downtown Moscow, I'm sure you don't have this feeling that you could get robbed or mugged or jumped or anything like that. And mm -hmm. it's the same for me when I walk uh, anywhere here in St. Petersburg, even for in the dangerous spots, people say Kudrovo, Morino, uh, Divyak, no, Divyak, you know, it's the same place, uh, Kupchino, even there, these places which were deemed uh, unsafe places. Uh, but I think this is just an old stereotype from 25 years ago. I still feel safer there than I feel walking in, uh, downtown Wheeling, West Virginia at night with some crackhead who's cracked out, you know, so with a knife on him or God knows what else. And he could you just got do some something. bad friends. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> so, um, no, I don't know, man. So I don't know if I can foresee myself living in Russia for uh, the rest of my life, but I think while I'm in my 20s still, um, uh -huh. I'm, more than, I'm more than comfortable, you know, living here and, uh, seeing what happens so yeah. okay so three more years and you're out <laughs> not guaranteed but subscribers uh, <laughs> so so tell me then what what is your plan you think after your 20s you might want to live somewhere else like like in what way like where i'm not sure man i mean if i can work remotely then i'm not against the idea of living here maybe in spring or summer and then maybe going um during the winter season to another country, maybe I would be open to going to like Bali or Thailand or somewhere like that and try to live, you know, down there where it's warmer, maybe even just Sochi, for example, maybe I'd go to Sochi or some other, you know, city down in Southern Russia. So I'm not 100% sure yet um, what exactly the plan looks like three, four years down the line. And I think uh, a lot of people now can say like, they planned one thing, but then everything completely changed. Like for, for example, within the last two years. Right. So um, I just try to live, you know, in the short term and I, I don't want to say in three years, I'll be out of Russia. I'll be gone. I might still be here. I might still be in the same apartment three years from now. So, but um, I don't know. I, I think I'd be more than comfortable staying here for another five years or so. Ideally, maybe I wouldn't live here during winter because it is, it is brutal during winter. I will say that guys for the audience, if you're ever going to come to Moscow or St. Petersburg, um, 
I would advise just do it in late spring or summer, uh, unless you really, really love snow and, you know, strong winds and slushy streets, at, at least in St. Petersburg. I think Moscow is pretty good with the slushy streets, but St. Petersburg, um, you know, <clears throat> you can die from an icicle uh, just hanging off of uh, the top of the roof, a stalactite, let's say, and it yeah. just, you know, so it can fall off and crush you. So uh, yeah, I would just advise down, people to come. Falling here, ice, head injuries. Yes, exactly. All the time, yeah. yeah. There's there's tape and signs to watch out for that. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because for me the winter does not bother me that much, and that's probably Lucky. because I grew up in Florida and you grew up in West Virginia. So Shouldn't it bother you, up, huh? Shouldn't it bother you more? Well, apparently not. Maybe it bothers me less because I I didn't get that much of it. Whereas you lived up, you lived in a place where you had to deal with it to a degree, not as bad, but to a degree. So when I go to St. Petersburg in winter, it's only a few days, so it doesn't mm -hmm. bother me. But I, I think if I live there, it might get old. But then I was also expecting that winter in Moscow would bother me, and it's not. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, but I, I guess that's because I was I was prepped for it, that it would be bad. Mm -hmm. And also my theory is because I'm bigger, maybe the cold doesn't bother me as much because mm -hmm. I know that my wife and daughter, you know, they want to cry sometimes. It doesn't bother you when it's negative 25 Celsius outside and you're trying to get that video and you've got your tripod there, you got your gloves on and you're just freezing like, hey guys, yeah. like it doesn't bother I, you. I, would, I think to be fair, there's about two or three days a year where I'm outside working and it's just, wow. It's like the, the wind is whipping and it is yeah. freezing. Um, but it's only like two or three times a year, you know what I mean? That that it happens to catch me when I'm outside and it's just okay. really bad. Yeah. Uh, but that's me, you know, and I, and I, but I've heard that St. Petersburg is worse. And yeah. I, I did grow up where there was humidity, bad, yeah. bad humidity in Florida. And I heard St. Petersburg has humidity. And so that's yeah. why for me, humidity would be high on my list of something not good. Yeah. Um, so on the, again, on the topic of is, is Russia, Europe, mm -hmm. someone has a follow up. Is USA or Canada a Europe, a type of Europe? What do you think? Joe, I think I'm going to pass this one on to you. You can go ahead and answer first. <laughs> well, I think what they're trying to hint at is, you know, we call Russia Europe. Why? You know, and if, if we're going to say Russia is Europe, then why wouldn't we say Canada um, and the USA are also Europe? Because these are descendants of Europe, just mm -hmm. as Russia is probably people that um, were sick of being told what to do by the Roman Empire or the British mm -hmm. Empire or whatever. And they decided, mm -hmm. I will go and live where it's flipping freezing cold, rather than be told what to do by you lords and ladies. Mm -hmm. um, it's my guess, something like that. Uh, but I, I don't know. So it's an interesting idea, you know, like where, where do we draw the line? I, think. I guess Europe is Europe and the U.S. is the U.S. And then I feel like Canada is just like the baby brother of the U.S. or something like that. So in uh -huh. Canada is Canada. Uh, Europe, for me, when I think of Europe, I think of these Gothic style 16th century church, medieval churches, cathedrals, uh -huh. um, and just the overall architectural style. Right. It's just completely mm -hmm. different. You know, the U.S. Um, it's just not like that. Right. It's just different now. Of course, in a lot of cities, we do have, you know, like the town square or whatever. Um, they have these types of architectural structures. Yeah, for sure. But overall, I think the U.S. is no, I, I don't know about Canada. I've never been to Canada, but uh, the U.S. is just more progressive. Right. They focused more on highways, I guess, uh, post World mm -hmm. War Two, whereas mm -hmm. Europe focused more on uh, public transportation. Um and oh, that's, by the way, a good point to make, too, about why uh, Russia is nice, at least St. Petersburg and Moscow, is that the public transportation. I know you've made videos about the metro in, in Moscow, probably a uh, multitude of them. But the like mm -hmm. the metro here is just so damn clean, so damn efficient, mm -hmm. so damn um, safe for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. And for the most part, how is it not safe? I, you know, there are some accounts I follow on Instagram where um, they do report some news that happens around the city. And there are occasionally some incidents in the metro where two people get in a fight. But, you know, this happens once every six months, you know, or uh -huh. someone does something or someone 
someone does something stupid or a teenager does something stupid, you know, this is going to happen occasionally. So yeah, it it's very safe. You know, you feel safe when you enter the subway and you go down the escalator and you get a, onto the platform and everything like that. You just feel safe, comfortable, but I don't think I would have that same feeling all the time in like New York city, for example. What do you think? Uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, I had my guard up when I came here just because I was programmed to have my guard up, you know, living in New York at different places. And yeah, you know, even in my small town of Tallahassee, you still have to be careful. You know, mm -hmm. there are you're crazy people on the street everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but there could be anywhere and everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, your stuff gets stolen if you turn your back easily. And mm -hmm. so when I came here and I would see, you know, packs of young men, I would mm -hmm. always be like, ready. And nothing ever happened. Nothing happens ever. And, no, ever. and nothing will. And nothing will. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, if you hear about stories of people, if you've heard stories about people, my first thought is these must be people that knew each other. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. So, I don't yeah. know. Do you know? Um, from what I've heard is that Russians will only fight people they know. Like, they'll just fight each other. Like, two dudes will just right. square up and fight each other, beat each other up quickly, and then 10 minutes later... You know, they're good. But in America, you can get in a street fight, for example. It could be with anyone. You accidentally yeah. bump into them. You look at them the wrong yeah. way. You look at their girl, for example. It could just – it could be anything. And then someone's just always ready or wants to fight. And I feel like some people, like, mm -hmm. just want to go out on a Friday, Saturday night, and they just look for a fight. But here, uh, you know, I've gone out a lot. I, I don't know about you for bars and clubs and stuff like that. I know you have your family, so probably not quite as much. But, you know, um, I've done my fair share of partying here in St. Petersburg at, um, over the three to four years in total, I've been here. I've never encountered a single problem. Of course, there's, there's the occasional drunk Russian that, you know, they find out you're from America and then they say something to you, but you know, I just, I just brush them off. Just, just say like, dude, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not about it right now. Just, you know, so you can just walk away or something like that, take the high road, but that'll happen oc occasionally, you know, because, uh, mm. When people are drunk, they'll act like that. But yeah, no, no fights, you know, no really bad encounters. And for the most part, everyone's just truly interested in like why you're here, what you like about being here and everything like that. And uh, right. yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, I don't go clubbing per se. Right. <laughs> I, I see from my show, I mean, I, I do go to, to pubs uh, and restaurants, yeah. you know, with friends and for the show and with, with Spit and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, no, I know. Um, I had a I had a question. Um, what what is your level of Russian? I, I would say, um, on a scale from like beginner to native speaker level. Like if we set the scale from like A one is beginner and then like C two is native speaker level or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would say realistically, realistically A two to A two plus. Um, mm -hmm. I can hold my own on a con in a conversation pretty well for the most part, and I can order tickets. I can go to the airport and talk to the, you know, people there no problem, um, and order at restaurants no problem. Ask for di di directions, but um, if we're gonna talk about quantum physics in Russian, forget about it. So um, no, like you saw in that video there, I do pre-write my scripts and I I translate, of course, a couple words that I don't know. And I have to, you know, conjugate it, conjugate it and everything and make it fit with the grammar. But um, other than that, no, I mean, I study Russian uh, pretty frequently. I do use an app, not Duolingo. I pay for this app and this app is very low key, but it's very, very good for anyone who wants to learn a language. Um, but I would say A2, A2 A level. I mean, I can hold my own for the most part. Uh, I, I don't have any problems. Some mistakes here and there might forget a word here and there. Of course, um, but I don't have, you know, that intermediate to advanced level vocabulary to really dive deep. Uh, but mm -hmm. surface level, I, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty uh, solid and pretty stable there. Okay, so you're a little bit better than me. I don't know. I, I don't know actually what your level of Russian is. <laughs> um, and, you know, from the video clip that we shared early, you, you look like ginger hair jesus uh, in russia hugging kids and in class and teaching people russian and being happy and you know uh, <laughs> but you're just an english teacher with a fun instagram channel yeah but um i do these english uh camps too in the summer i usually do one or maybe two 
Um, this summer I'll do one, but um, yeah, you know, I, I do that to help my school out, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, I think there's an added bonus for the kids and for the parents to have a native speaker from the U.S. at one of these camps. And uh, for it's only a 10 day camp. They in Russia they have 21 day camps, which is more common, and they also have 10 day camps. I would not do a 21 day camp. That's way too long for me. 10 days is like my max, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I like the kids. I like playing with them, doing sports. I like educating them. And uh, I like interacting with them because it, it's all interesting for me. You know, I, I can only imagine, you know, their point of view, some eight or nine year old who's been learning English in school for a year or two years. Right. You know, a couple words and phrases like that. And then this big native speaker comes along and I'm like, hey, how are you doing? I, I think it's like something that they will remember uh, for the rest of their lives. Um, so no, I just do what I can there. And, uh, you know, so it's like that. Okay. Very good. So you mentioned that you, you do Duolingo some, so what would you recommend to foreigners that are thinking of vacationing or moving here? So just Duolingo, is there anything else that you like? No, I don't use Duolingo. I, I think that app is pretty shitty. Um, I pay for my app, uh, about $7 oh. a month and it's really good. I would recommend for all foreigners who would really like to come here you got to try uh -huh. to learn you got to try to learn the language beforehand the alphabet please learn the alphabet and uh just learn some very very simple phrases because um i met an american guy here just uh accidentally outside of the, the metro station where i live at here uh maybe two mm -hmm. weeks ago because i overheard him and some loudmouth girl speaking english very loudly at like 10 p.m and so i uh -huh. eavesdropped on their conversation you know, I stood nearby, acted like I'm like, I might your AirPods in, like I'm, you know, waiting for someone, but I was just eavesdropping. Uh, I didn't know what he was doing, whether he was trying to pick her up. So I didn't want to interject, but I just let them finish. Mm -hmm. And so after they finished, he started walking away, away and he's the same age as you. I think he's a little bit older, in fact, 55, but um, oh. it was his first time in St. Petersburg. You know, I just went up to him, approached him, said like, Hey, what's up? Where are you from? You know, it was pretty obvious he wasn't Russian. So he said, yeah, I'm from the U S uh, you know, and so we just, I uh, had a conversation and he said, yeah, I don't speak any Russian really. You know, I can just read the uh, alphabet a little bit. Um, and I know a few very basic phrases, but other than that. So so I think it's you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't try to learn their language, because the respect factor and um, will increase so much if you just try. Right. If you come here, if you just know, like, привет, как дела? You know, like, and just some very basic phrases, um, at least try to start the conversation with people in Russian. They'll probably switch, switch to English quickly, but they will respect you so much more uh, if you try mm -hmm. to just start the conversation with them in their language. Um, but it just makes life so much easier here if you can just read Russian. You know, if you can read the signs and, uh, yeah, read some text. What, what, what do you think? Because I, I assume you, when you moved here, you probably didn't know Russian very well. So what was that like? You know, you had to try to learn a little bit harder for your kids and for your family and for yourself living here, right? Well, Sid and I have been married for 10 years now. So it was, um, I was eight years in America with her, I suppose, um, you know, picking up bits of the language mm -hmm. and, and studying some, you know, mm -hmm. but we weren't thinking we would ever move here. So right. I wasn't really pushing it. Right. Um, she was raising all of our kids that way right. with Russian, including, you know, my oldest, who's now 23 and, and, and Aurora, who is now who's going to be 20 soon, actually, mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in like a week or so. Um, and so, How many kids every, you have? I, well, we in total together, we have five, you know, mm -hmm. I had, I had a set from my first marriage and I right. had a set from this marriage and Sveta just had one other child without me. Nice. Um, well, you, you've spread your fruitful seed, which, which is great. Hey, yeah, man, that's right. You got, everyone should have three kids or more if they like their culture and they want right. their culture to grow. Um, yeah. Um, so, guys, I want to remind you, send us your questions. I'm watching. And what I see is you guys are socializing with each other and not sending us questions. So <laughs> come on, they, subscribers. They, 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 they just come here to hang out with each other, but not, not for us. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe, what do you think? Can, can you make any comparisons? I'm curious to get your opinion. You know, I don't have any children and I don't plan to until I'm at least 
30 or 31, but what maybe you can compare and contrast like uh, raising your children in the U S versus in Russia. Has it been more difficult here in terms of schooling or what, what do you think? Well, first off, I want to say that I do like Duolingo, Brandon. I don't know what's wrong with you. Let's have an argument now. Um, but I think I think Duolingo is good because it's free. Um, but I want to know before we get off this topic, what do you pay for in case people want to pay this for the service you're using to learn? You know, I've contacted them so many times for paid partnership. I've told them, look, I've got a big following, but they're just they're uh, not about it. So they're, they're not about it. But I'm, I'm going to give them the free promo anyway. So I use it. You don't have Mango. to, man. <laughs> Okay, uh, right, I, I don't gate. I don't gatekeep. So it's called Mangu, right there. Mangu, Mangu or Mango. Mangu. Yeah, Mangu, Mango, whatever it is. So I'll just show you very briefly here why it's better than Duolingo. So okay. if you does I just chose a random topic. So the question they show it in English, right? So it's oh, it's color coded. Each right. word is color coded. Oh. And so okay. how do I choose the right school? So I I know what this is. It's like Kak Vibrat, uh Prime the school, right? So, and then you just type, you click it in Russian, and then it's right there, all color coded for you. And they have the uh, audio, men's okay. voice, a, a man's voice, a woman's voice. So it's for me, it's fantastic. And I started using this in 2019. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's really helped me a lot to improve my Russian. And it's, uh, I like the layout of the app. It's very simplistic, and uh, it's right to the point. And I like the structure of the lessons and they have so many lessons from arriving at the airport to ordering a taxi, to ordering restaurant out of food, to going to the pharmacy. They've got all of it and you can jump through the lessons. You don't have to follow a specific order. You can skip through and find whatever you think you might need. So for me, because it's all color coded, like here, even this, the next, I just put the next thing, state, go to Darsini. Right. So wow. for me, it's it's this is a great app. I think it's one of the best for me, at least. So, yeah. OK, so what did you ask me? I forgot. I don't know. I forget, too. <laughs> oh, I asked about raising your kids. Uh, the differences between uh, raising ah, them in the US versus Russia. I like that. That's good. Well, I, of course, think it's better to raise the kids here because of say it with me, guys, traditional family values. As I talk about a lot. Can, can you um, break that down, by the way, traditional family values? Because maybe some people uh, might be in that gray zone and they might not exactly understand what you mean by traditional family values. Well, it's code word for words the algorithm won't let me say. Uh, no, but well, that's part of it. <laughs> but um, but the, but, you know, OK, so. In in on at a governmental level, on an educational level. Uh, on a house to house level, the majority of people are thinking family, a nuclear family comes first. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone has their role. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I am supposed to open the door for all the ladies. You know, mm -hmm. they're supposed to offer, cook a great meal for me if I end up in their house. You know, mm -hmm. uh, everyone has their role. Kids right. are kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're not like being shown stuff and encouraged right. to become by the time they're 11 and a half, you know, right. they're allowed to be children. Right. Um, I think that, you know, I mean, I could go on and on, but the algorithm won't let me. But I mean, <laughs> my daughter, Aurora, who, who I said is going to be 20 soon, I mean, if we were still living in America, she couldn't go to university by herself in New York, you know? Yeah. Um, I just, I think it's, I think, it, I mean, I know it's physically safer. And I think that this country is leaning towards religion in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, it gets down to religion. It's better to say traditional family values because then you don't offend the uh, atheists. Um, <laughs> but uh, right. you know, and I think America is leaning away from traditional mm -hmm. family values. They're experimenting with it. And like right. I said, I don't think America's evil. They're just they're just wondering: Do we really have to have a society that's built on? on the bible and and you know you know socrates and german right. fairy tales this stuff can we just throw it all out the window and just say anything goes right um, and i think what they're realizing is they cannot or not realizing but what i'm learning and some right. people are learning is they cannot mm -hmm. so. okay yeah yeah i like that answer so fantastic fantastic okay so go ahead and go back to the comparisons and uh, any contrasts you might have 
Well, I mean, what between the, I think the education, it appears to be better. Of course, I've only been here for two years. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, I mean, the, the, the main thing is you're safe on the street. Um, the next thing is food is, is pretty healthy. Um, it's, you know, I think it seems healthier than food in America. Yeah. You know? Less processed think, GMOs and everything. Yeah. 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 There seems to be more days off. There are. Less, this is, this yeah. is a fact. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. But I think there um, are 28, right? I don't, know. I don't there, know. There are, there are 28 days off. I mean, legally, if someone works a legal job here, they're entitled to 28 paid PTO, uh, days off. Uh, so that's wow. fantastic. Wow. Wow. Very good. Um, you know, living in Moscow, I haven't had to buy a car yet. My wife wants to, I'm fine mm -hmm. with that. If she wants to buy a car. We should get mm -hmm. around to it, but I really don't need it because the Metro gets me everywhere in this city. Everywhere. This city huge, And I'm spoiled and I I'm living where I can get to anything I want very easily. It makes Absolutely. it hard for me to imagine living somewhere else, which is why I think you're crazy by the way. Thanks, um, you want to leave in three years. Sorry. No, offense. <laughs> we're, we're going to get to that. Um, but, uh, leave also, in the winter. <laughs> if I, if I go on vacation, I just jump on the train and I go to some other smaller historic city and I wander around there. We just did that in Tula. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yes. Yeah. It's so nice, man. Yeah. So yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, and it's funny cause I get these comments all the time. Moscow's not Russia. Moscow's not Russia. You know, and if you're living in Russia in a poor place, I understand you might yeah. hear someone say that and pick up that banner and carry that charge. But um, you know, you could if that's if you're if you're gonna say that's true and that's the way it is, you can say the same. You can stand, you could live in America and you can shout New York's not America mm -hmm. all day long. Yeah. You can yeah. do that about any city right. in any country. Right. You know, there's different levels everywhere you go and right it's just life unfortunately i mean jesus said the poor you will always have um so yeah. uh well why don't we try to answer this question unless we already did yo yo how is i didn't know you were like that avon more milk i didn't know you were like a hipster or like not a hipster <laughs> a hipster wouldn't say that a, a hip person right um yo yo how is usa different or similar to russia from your point of view. So Brandon, now how about you? <laughs> oh man. I mean, are we talking, <sighs> this is like a conversation that we could talk about for hours, but just you give know, us the interesting part. I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. I think uh, in America, people care more about uh, sports than uh -huh. people in Russia, like Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoons and evenings for football. That's like a staple for a lot of households in America. Um, mm -hmm. And Russia, I, I think, yeah, there's not this big market for sports quite as much. You know, they do have soccer and hockey, but, you know, American football and baseball and especially like, you know, also basketball too. These are like staples for a lot of American families and a lot of households where in Russia, you won't see that. You won't see families gathering around in the living room, watching the TV, watching sports events i don't think so at least I, I haven't seen that quite as much so i think americans i think, I think, I think americans a sports guy, right do what you're a sports guy right yeah i mean i i do like sports i like basketball i do like american football um not so big into baseball but um it's just what i've picked up on for the most part is that you know even the girls at college in the US, they are they're gonna know a little bit about American football, right? But the college girls here, they're not gonna know anything about like <laughs> soccer or hockey for the most part, right? So, so I think I, I I grew up in Tallahassee, Florida, and uh the Seminoles are a big deal, Florida State Seminoles. Um, and someone yeah. coined the phrase once that it's like a religion in Tallahassee, yeah. the Seminoles. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, they're right. Because so much of the city economy revolves around it, people get so excited about it. Yeah. I I'm not into sports at all. I'm mm -hmm. I'm like a lady. I just I just do not have that competitive streak. I could just okay. I could care less. You know, I'll watch like the big game of the year, like right. every other year, whatever that might be. Fine, you right. know, and, and and I can enjoy the game and the commercials and get into it, and it's cool. And then I'm done. I went to a hockey game here, uh, like 
14 months ago. I did it's an episode on my channel, and that was yeah. great. And, and now I'm on to the next thing. I don't really care to go to another hockey game. Maybe I will if people want me right. to. It's right. just I'm not like a typical guy in that way, so I don't think about such things. Right. But I think I think you might be right that maybe Russians are not as into sports. Yeah. 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 And also, like, I don't know, but I think the culture in school is totally different, man. Like high school in America, I think it's a big deal for a lot of kids. But here, I, I as far as I understand, and I taught at schools before back in 2019, but the second graders are in the same building as the 11th graders, right? So, oh, in Russia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And again, like in America, we have American football, right? We have every high school has the football stadium and, you know, every, everything like that. Right. But in Russia, it's, you, you just have this small school that's already connected to the buildings here. Right. Meanwhile, okay, high okay, schools yeah, are all okay. separated. So that's just one small thing I've noticed too. No, in, in the big city cities, Moscow and St. Petersburg, the way it was designed, from what I understand, is is every major block has yeah. something you need to live. You don't have to go outside that block. Yeah. So there's going to be a school inside that major block, yeah. and it's going to be because it's just for that block, and and it's going it has all grades in it. So Christoph goes to a school now, and I see kids that are almost adults. It's the entire mm -hmm. grade school. It's not like Elementary school is is yeah. in your backyard, and middle right. school is on the other side of town, and high school is downtown. And yeah. here, it's it's all in one building. Yeah. And, and and Sveta, my wife, she she explained this too to me that she went to the same school her entire grade school experience. Exactly. So her, her friends that she met, you know, grade one over here, they were her friends for a, over a decade, and she's right. still in touch with some of these people. Right. And, right. and to exactly. me, that's like, wow, yep. that's very like 1950s America sounding, very like traditional family values, like just a close community, like right. something in a movie where you would know your friends forever. Right. You know, that is right. very, very cool. Right. So I, I like that right. a lot. Right. Um, okay. What else can I say? I don't know. So there, there are so many like minor details we could get into. That would be like a whole separate conversation. But um no, there are differences between the U.S. and, and Russia, of course. Um, similarities, I do think that people are people at the end of the day. And uh, the people here are very kind and generous. Um, but I think in America, that, that kindness and that American smile, it's kind of surface level, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel yeah. like people here, the idea of friendship, for girls especially, it goes deeper than surface level. It's like, I think for dudes too, like they don't just call someone their friend in Russia. You know, you, you have to get, you have to have a lot of ex experiences with this person, uh, memories with this person in order to say friend. But, you know, in the U S you might say to someone, Oh yeah, that's my friend. We, I, we meet at the bar occasionally. Yeah, I know him. Good guy, Johnny, but you've only met him at the bars. You've never hung out with him anywhere else. So, but they say yeah. friend. So that word friendship is used very loosely. But here in Russia, I think that word friendship, there's there's a lot of value behind that word, right? Yeah, yeah. The relationships are definitely deeper here for sure. Like I've said before, I think Americans prioritize friendliness, Russians prioritize honesty. And so yeah. you've got deep friendships and both things are good. Uh, okay. well, how about this question here, Brandon, for you? Okay. Ask Brandon, is there any American community in St. Petersburg? Do you communicate, go out with other Americans in St. Petersburg, if any? Uh, no, uh, I am in one small American group chat, which I, I think I mentioned earlier, but yeah. um, all of them live in Moscow, every single one. And there's only like 12 or 13 of us in that chat, but and I'm the only one in St. Petersburg. Um, the one American I mentioned a little bit earlier that I met here outside of the metro, just completely random, completely random encounter. Uh, I don't know of any other Americans here right now in St. Petersburg, to be honest. Um, I'm not connected with them. At least I, I do know one. His name's Chad. Maybe you know. He's the TikTok fugitive. Him and I, we, we have a good relationship. Um, he's the only other one off the top of my head. Um, I don't know if you've seen him, Joe, by the way, the TikTok fugitive. Have you heard of him? No, no, no. I'm not a TikTok guy. I, I, I'm not, that's just the name, but he also has a following on Instagram, but I don't think he does YouTube. I'll send you some stuff after because his story is absolutely ridiculous. Um, oh, okay. But we, we have a small business idea, and I think – me, Chad, and then one other guy, We, I think we should incorporate you into that. So I'll send you all the details on that later. 
Okay. Um, Sounds but I'm intrigued. He he's the only one that I'm in touch with um, in St. Petersburg. And, you know, he's a little bit older. He's, he's your age. He's 48. So, but um, he's a great guy. He's cool. I like speaking to him. Smart, smart man. Uh, but other than that, in St. Petersburg, I don't know of any other community uh, of Americans here um, at all. I'm not in touch with them. So if there are any, you can send them my way, but <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't have, I don't have much time to hang out with them anyway, for the most part, but to grab a beer once I, I'm not against anything. So, but I, I just really don't know of any, I think most of them have left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that in Moscow, it, it they're, it, they're by and large unofficial. Like we know of each other, yeah. but it would be too small to say American. I would say Anglo-Saxon. Okay. So it's a lot of British people. Um, of course, people know me as a Christian. So, you know, I, I know a lot of the, like the Christian Americans here. Yeah. Um, and we have, I have a small group that tries to get together. We've gotten together like twice. Yeah. Where it's like Christian Americans, like at a pub, like during yeah. the week. Yeah. Um, and um, I think because uh, Britain is closer, um, I know more British people just in my daily life now yes. than I know Americans in my daily life. Yeah, uh, which is funny, you know, because I, I know the the amount of British people I know now compared to, um, you know, my forty seven years beforehand. It's like it, way, it's, it's like multiple times more. It's so interesting because I do have a French friend and a British friend. Uh, the French guy he lives here in Saint Petersburg, but the British guy he comes here on and off when he's not wow. working in the UK. But it's so interesting when we all go out. And if we somehow manage to talk to a group of girls, or at least when we used to when I was single, you know, um, and we would meet these girls. And when we all said when, where we're from, the girls always turn their head to the American because I think there's just something so fascinating coming from the U.S. That distance, too, that distance means a lot, you know, uh -huh. um, compared to the U.K., and I think my my British friend always felt a little bit uh, jealous at some moments because he wouldn't get the attention from chicks or from people in general that uh -huh. maybe I would. Uh -huh. you know? uh, well, here, here's a question that was not, I think it was just them socializing. But I pulled it up because it's a good one. I think it's fun. It's interesting. Do Russian guys wear baseball caps? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not as much as teenagers in the U.S., but they absolutely do. One one walk on Nevsky Prospect here, you'll see a lot of dudes just wearing a baseball caps front, back, usually front. But, um, yeah, I mean, I see it all the time, especially the young people, you know. So, absolutely. I think uh, I think so, yeah. So, we're going to end, guys, in about 20 minutes, 20, 23 minutes. So, if you – have a question you you've been shy about sending send it maybe you haven't i haven't gotten to it yet i'm saying this now for myself and for brandon so that we can be sure that we say what we want to say um of course i'll tell you where to find him if i haven't put it in the description he like he already said he's on instagram but let me make sure i i get through um the my notes um because there's some things i definitely want to address so what i'm getting from you brandon because yeah. you said you want to leave in three years or less and i know that that that's because I have a good read on my subscribers. I know some of the Russians are going to be like, forget this guy. He doesn't want to live here. Um, so I, my, what, what I'm thinking from you is you don't like cold weather and perhaps your girlfriend is a liberal and she wants to leave this country. I'm just teasing you, but, but go ahead. So what, explain yourself. What do you think? What are your thoughts? I think there's a little bit of truth behind that second part. <laughs> the first part, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> But 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 not not so much not not like you think. No, she comes from a very traditional uh, household. She had a, a good father in her life. Uh, she has a good father in her life still. Um, but I think this is just the day and age where all 19, 20, 21 year olds, they want to pack their bags and they want to try to live this digital nomad lifestyle. And if mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to take your laptop with you to you know bali and that seems to be the spot all russian girls want to go to is fucking bali but uh you know i think if the opportunity is present then i think you should take advantage of it i'm not against it either and no, i think sure, it's sure. good i think it's well, good I mean, so. she has spent her whole life here of course she's going to be curious to see other places how old is yeah. she uh, she's 21 and she's not from st petersburg she lives here now because of the university but she's from Taglietti. What is that? 
It's a city uh, on the Volga River. So does it have Italians in it? Does it have what? Italians in it. I'm just kidding. No, it no, sounds no, like no. an Italian name. It, 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 um, do you know the city of Samara? I've heard of it. Okay, it's an hour from Samara. So anyway, it's just a smaller city, maybe three, four hundred thousand people. It's a population, but anyway, so um, yeah. And you're not a big fan of cold weather, so she'd like to see the world. You don't like cold weather anyway, so you're thinking maybe in three years this, you guys will hit the road and see the world and have a bunch of kids. Well, again, I think I'm open to staying here in spring and summer. Right now, it's a great time to be here. The weather in Fahrenheit. Uh, now it's around 50, which for me, it's very comfortable. Just a very light jacket on outside. Well, it depends. It depends if it's windy or not. If it's super windy, then you might need a heavier one. But now the sunlight, it's still sunlight out, right? So now until the end of August, September, it's a great time to be here. So I wouldn't be against just leaving during the winter and autumn. Because for me, autumn sucks here. It's horrible. It's just rain it becomes windier, just becomes darker. And it's just like just transitioning right into winter. So um every girl will say like oh the flowers are so beautiful oh the trees the leaves change colors it's all just nonsense the weather becomes so poor here and becomes so dark and disgusting and then you just realize that you're gonna have to deal with this for six more months so i think ideally i would love to live here in spring and summer and then move uh -huh. to somewhere warmer in like october so you know that time when when it's transitioning from winter to spring that to me that's the worst time it's like snow mud everywhere um do you know what i'm talking about i do know what you're talking about yes uh -huh. you're talking like march right end of february yeah. march yeah 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 but it, i do know what you're me, talking about this in moscow it like happened real fast it was yeah. like two weeks it was done yeah. um was it quicker for you guys did it seem did the seasons change seem to change quicker or is that just a moscow thing we didn't have any snow during the month of march in st petersburg which is a complete contrast compared to last year where we had snow for four days and then it would melt and then the next day snow again so this march was fantastic overall and april so far has been great too i'm uh optimistic that the snow has finished i really hope it has um but march was great in st petersburg here um january and the beginning of february br brutal like always um the slush man it's just it's just brutal man like i'm telling you it's i don't know about moscow because i haven't lived there in the winter but mm -hmm. as far as what i've heard you guys really do a good job uh, keeping the streets clean there like a really mm -hmm. good job but here, okay. not so much, man. I don't think the mayor here is so open to spending all the money on cleaning the streets. So it's just uh -huh. dirty and yucky and slushy and slippery and icy. And God, man, like it's you don't you don't mean like homeless trash dirty, just to be clear. You just mean like, you know, soot and snow and yeah, and just that, really dirt yeah, piling yeah. Up. exactly. Yeah. No, yeah, not trash or anything like that, just just related to the snow. So what imp this is my question what impact has russia had on you and what impact have you had on russia as we start to come to a close with this thing it's a loaded question right there maybe you would like to answer first well this is uh my chance for you to uh talk about how i think you were in the saint petersburg newspaper or something like that ah uh, i got it um well, <laughs> thank you for alley-ooping me um <laughs> Well, you know, I, I don't mind being in being an English teacher here. I'm a little congested right now. I'm still a little bit hungover from a party last night. By the way, very interesting. Hosted my very first drinking English speaking club last night in this apartment right here. This Victorian style apartment. It's a little messy right now. Still haven't 100% cleaned up. But imagine oh. the audience, the viewers, you can live here in this apartment too or – the neighboring apartment for four hundred and fifty dollars a month, you know. So just bear that in mind. But nice. um, good to know. You, you know, I I do my best to stay active at my school and teach a lot of classes there, and then making the videos, interviewing people, talking to people, hosting my English speaking clubs here, which uh, allows people to gather together and to communicate with me and other Russians in English. 
And so with the camps and everything combined and all of that, and all, I think all the video content I've made, because now everyone's just on Instagram scrolling. Everyone's mm -hmm. there. It's your mothers. It's your fathers. It's your aunts, your uncles, your grandma on the Metro. She's probably scrolling something to TikTok, Instagram. I don't know. Uh, it's your sons, your daughters, uh, your cousins, your nieces and your nephews. Everyone's there scrolling. So um, I, I just realized a year ago that this, this is the way I have to make decent videos, just interviewing people, record like what I do at my school, how I teach there, the camps, what activities we do. Um, stuff with my girlfriend, little content like that, where kind of like international couple content, just record everything about life here and why it's so interesting for us as Americans here. And I think Russians can perceive it from another perspective, you know, and they get some insight, uh, as to why we live here and why it's okay for us, you know, um, because the usual situation is that most Russians want to move to the U S but it's very unique when Americans move to Russia. So when you record this and put it out there for people to consume, um, a lot of people, different people are going to see it. And uh, one lady, she happened to uh, find, you know, one of my videos, at least, I don't know exactly, but she just DM'd me on Instagram and said, hey, I'm like a journalist for this newspaper. It's one of the biggest in Russia. It's kind of more like Soviet style, as far as I understood. I sent it to this message to a few of my friends. I'm like, hey, have you guys like heard of this newspaper? before and they're like yeah, yeah yeah it's like really popular um my my grandma reads it and i'm like oh great you know she wants to interview me i'm gonna be famous uh for all the babushkas in russia you know they're gonna invite me to their house and cook me blini and borscht this is amazing so right. no she just did a brief interview um with me uh through telegram not even in person just through telegram uh, i sent her voice messages to answer and the same tabloid that she works for, I forget what it's called in Russian, unfortunately, uh, something Pravda, whatever. Um, someone else who lives in St. Petersburg, another journalist reached out to me last week and they want to go with me through like a ride around St. Petersburg for like an hour and a half on one of those oh, like wow. old, one of those old like uh, trains or whatever they have in the city for tourists to go on. So uh -huh. I guess I'll get a second, second interview soon. So, wow. So you are becoming semi-famous in St. Petersburg. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like to say famous. I, I just think some people have stumbled upon my videos. They followed me. And uh, yes, some days when I go out to a bar or to some event, someone comes up to me and they say, uh, oh, I've seen you on Instagram. I've seen your videos. It happened last night at this club. Some dude approached me after and he said, hey, I'm following you. It happened to me two weeks ago at a restaurant. And sometimes on the street, some lady will say like, yeah, was nice. Yeah, but we saw on Instagram or something like that. So it feels great that knowing that your hard work that you put into editing the videos, recording the videos and everything like that is, is paying off. Um, and I get students that I get to teach English with online, which is fantastic. Um, and that's the your overall goal here. Perfect. Embrace your destiny. Thanks, brother. Thanks. Accept it. Have you have you ever uh, experienced an encounter in Moscow where someone came up to you and said, "Hey, I, I watch your videos. I've seen one of your videos." <laughs> Every other day. No. Yeah, it's continuous. Yeah, it's like photos, and they say I'm following you, and I say physically. No, they don't. They don't say that. <laughs> You've got your paparazzi there. <laughs> yeah, and and we we've done like uncountable interviews with other news stations and channels and yeah and, um uh, we've done way more than have actually posted like right. there's about to be a lot that are going to start coming out right. um and yeah so it, yeah i'm i'm for sure semi-famous in moscow i could say um and uh it's it's interesting because i did not start this channel for that i started this channel in hopes that westerners would wake up to what russia really is and think well russia's not a a place we need to be afraid of. What's your demographic? Well, now, well, it was ninety percent Russian when I started. Now it's like thirty percent Russian, thirty percent American, and thirty percent everybody else. Uh -huh. And um, what's cool though that I, when I started the channel, and even now, is you know because like fish, they don't know they're swimming in water. They just think they're living in a world where they're floating and flying around. Right. You know, when you when you are in your world, you don't notice things. And, and a cool a cool side effect is is not is not only that I'm reaching Westerners, 
but that Russians are watching the show and, you know, like they're almost in tears and their comments almost make me in tears because they, they're able to see how I see their world. Yeah. And it, and it's kind of like refreshing for them. Yes. To, yes. To appreciate it more. Yeah. You know? so, they, they almost yeah. live vicariously. Like, they almost yeah, live yeah, vicariously yeah. for us. Yeah. 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 And we're not, we're nobody special. We just happen to be right. here in this unique time. Right. You know, yeah. And, and we can share. Yeah. Yeah. We just put so, up our camera. And um, yeah. So here's an audience question. I want to try and get to as many of these as I can because I asked them to send them in. And maybe you can answer this, maybe you can't. What is the average pay in any particular job in Russia versus the cost of living? I, I can't speak on anything other than what I do. So uh -huh. I am an English teacher, preacher, educator, whatever you want to call it, right? So um, I think in St. Petersburg here as a native speaker, um, through a school, right, that sponsors your work visa, uh, I think you can crack 125,000 rubles a month, maybe to 150,000 rubles a month um, through them. And then after taxes, it's going to be a little bit less. Um, there, all, there is one really good school here. It's called CIS Cambridge International School. Uh, private parents have to pay a boatload of money for their kids to go there. And I did have one American acquaintance a year ago that worked there, and uh, he told me he makes around three hundred thousand rubles a month, which is uh, right now let's say three thousand dollars. Right for St. Petersburg, that's great. That's a great, I would say, upper middle class income. Um, right. But you know. I, you just, you just, I don't know how to really say this, but no, you shouldn't just work through the school because, okay, that Cambridge school that I told you about, it's very difficult to get accepted there. And you're going to be teaching at uh, like a kindergarten or a third grade class from 8 a.m. in the morning till 4 p.m. And then you're going to have mm -hmm. to test the grade. So it's going to be a lot of work, right? Mm -hmm. um, I work through a language center, which is what most foreigners, like Brit British people, um, Americans, and what, whoever else. This is what they do. They, the, they work through a language center. So in the evenings, maybe like 3, 3.30, 4, until 8 or something like that, 8.30. Um, yes, it sounds shitty, but you can, you know, you can uh, decide with your uh, sponsor what hours you'd like, right? right. So, for example, right. I don't work at my school on Wednesday at all. That's, uh, but I work there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Right. Wow. So I also have some some students for online lessons, too, which which helps. And also the speaking clubs. So I think if you're looking to teach English here, um, you can you can crack. Well, it, I don't want to put it in dollars because it sounds so sad, but <laughs> in mm -hmm. rubles, um, you can crack one twenty five, one thirty thousand. No problem, which is enough. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's a tough question because everyone is at a different level career wise. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, you can say in general that yes, Russia pays less, but yes. but you all but the question said in cost of living too. The cost of living is way low compared yeah. to the U.S. Yeah, so it's very disingenuous when people say, "Oh man, you're going to be making so much less in this career versus that," you know, in he, here versus there. Yeah, you know, either they don't know or they're trying to be deceptive. I mean, right. yes, you make less here. The cost of living is way less. You don't need as much to live here. Yeah. Um, I do think you have more time with more vacation days to actually enjoy your life and vacation right. and do things here. There's right. lots of free stuff here. There's lots of parks you get to go here, go right. to here. Right. In America, you might be making more money, but you you hardly ever have time to enjoy these things. Right. If you do it's something super expensive like Disney World, and you're racing through that thing exhausted. Right. Um, so, yeah, yeah that, that, that's what I think. And, and, you know, a lot of foreigners that are young like yourself that don't have an established career yet, you know, they're doing what you're doing. They're teaching English or they're doing what I'm doing. They're getting into more media related stuff. This is a lot right. of English speakers in the media. Right. Uh, well, you're doing that, too, because you have a channel. So, right. Um, but uh, I want to ask you, what about family and friends in the U.S. that, you know, that you left behind? Did you yeah. not have a whole lot or was that a consideration? Because I understand you you kind of tripped into living in St. Petersburg. Yeah. But there is a sacrifice when you yeah. leave your country behind. Yeah. Yeah. That That is tricky. That is really tricky right there. Um, I don't have brothers or sisters and I'm an only child to a single mother. 
So when I came here, that, that was like, I think my mom was crushed a little bit. Uh, I think it was like a part of her soul left her. I felt really bad and I still feel really bad to this day. Um, I text her every day. We call once a week, video call, but yeah, um, that, that's the hardest thing, man. But, um, uh, okay. and it was, it was, it was difficult last year because of my grandmother passed away and I wasn't there, you know, with my mom and grandpa and mm -hmm. everything like that to like kind of be there near with them during that difficult time period. So you know, that, that's just the big sacrifice that comes with this. It's tricky, man. It's difficult. Um, and some nights I go to sleep and what I may, I might wake up in the morning and I think like, I feel guilty a little bit. Like, like, I don't think this was like, was this really in my path? And, you know, I feel guilty. My mom paid all that, you know, help pay for my college education just for me to like pretty much go to Russia afterwards. So, um, and I, I don't think there's any way I could like make up for that. So I, I do my best now. I try to go home. I go home every year for Christmas and New Year. That's 100%. I would really like to go home twice, like in the summer. Um, and yeah, so, but it just doesn't make up for it, you know? So, yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. So yeah, it's just, thanks it's for just, honest answer. Yeah, that's just how it is, man. I think for all Americans, that's the one thing they can say. Uh, the distance, it's just so large. Even like with my British and French friend. You know, they can get on uh, a bus to um, to Estonia and then just take mm -hmm. a flight there to Paris or to the UK for a lot cheaper, like 300 euros, 200 euros. But going to the US, man, it's tricky now, man. It's difficult. It's expensive. It takes two days uh, unless you want to pay an absurd amount of money uh, for flights, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So here's a question on the screen. You and I were talking about sports earlier, and I think someone decided to ask this. Isn't soccer and ice hockey big in Russia? I'd say so, yeah. What do you think? You were saying Russians don't really care about sports. I think you inspired Grassy Knoll to ask this question. Grassy Knoll, I believe, is an American, perhaps from Texas. Well, he's right. Yeah, soccer and ice hockey are the big sports in Russia, but... Uh -huh. It's not comparable to American football in the U.S. and maybe the NBA or American baseball. So I just don't think it's comparable. You know, yeah. so, Sunday yeah. for Americans, football day, families, that's huge. But you just don't see that here quite as much. Mm -hmm. So um, my question, my last question to you, because we're coming near the end here, okay. you can ask me questions too if you want, and I'm, I'll try to see if I can get to any more audience questions. I got one on the screen now. Is when are you guys gonna get married? Well, I'm 27 and she's 21, so I, <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Not now. She's still in university. She's still in university, so she's okay. got to finish that. So, so when she finishes university. Yeah, you, maybe maybe you've noticed that in Russia, people, uh, what what's the expression? Um, jump the gun or jump the ship or whatever. No, jump the gun, right? When mm -hmm. it comes to getting married, I, I know mm -hmm. twenty one year olds, twenty two year olds that they get in a relationship and then they live together within three weeks of getting in a relationship, and then they get mm -hmm. married within three to six months of being together. Uh -huh. And I'm just like, how do you just move so quickly with this? Like, I need time to. Feel like i want to feel 100 comfortable with this person you know and i think it for me that time is much longer than three to six months and moving in with someone within dating them within a month so that for me that's absolutely insane but it's so common here right and then you've got these 21 22 year olds getting married and then it, you look at the divorce rate in russia and it's like 65 percent and i tell these guys like dude what for what reason like i just tell them honestly for what reason do you need to get married at 21 or 22 years old? You have your whole 20s to be together and get married when you're 28 or 29, when you're more in a, in a stable position financially, mentally, right? So I'm just like, why, for what reason do you need to get married as like a senior in college or just a, a, a fresh graduate? So for me, mm -hmm. it's absolutely insane. Um, I, for me, I, I like to take my good old time with things. Um, so... I think I don't even live with my girlfriend, dude. We've been together for a year and a half now, almost, and we don't live together. And that's that's by choice of both of us because we see. Well, I think that's good. We see. Obviously, how, as a Christian, I think that's good. Yeah, we. I, I've seen how it went through college. 
my, she sees now with her friends who are also in her uh, in her junior year too. And they get her friends get together with a guy, and then they start living together. And then within three months, they're arguing and fighting because they live in some small box apartment, right, twenty square meter uh, studio. And then they're already bickering like an old couple because there's not enough space, you know. And when you're with someone with a lot a lot of time in such a small space, you know, just more arguments are likely to happen. So I'm a big fan of giving someone their space, right? Mm -hmm. So we meet up three times a week because we're very busy. I have my work, lessons, videos, whatever. Uh, speaking clubs, she has dance, university, her little work with design. So we meet up when it's very convenient for us every couple of days. That way we can come back with like new emotions, new feelings, new experiences, discuss. And I, I just don't see why we need to live together until she gra after she graduates from college. So that's just my stance on it. Just my personal opinion. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of backlash for it. And my students who are adults, when they ask this question too, they always ask me like, Brandon, don't you live with your girlfriend? I said, no. And they're like, really? And I'm like, I said, no, no, I don't. So, it, and both of us, it's not like it's just me saying that. She's totally on the same page with me. Mm -hmm. So we value our personal space, but we value being together the same. So when we come together, it's fantastic. We barely ever argue because we don't even have enough time to argue, right? Um, so no, actually it works out very, very well, but I also think a lot of people would not accept the terms of like our relationship for their relationship because we don't right. meet as often as maybe most couples would like to, and we're not dependent on each other. You know, we have our own stuff going on in our lives and we're focused on growing ourselves and then coming together to meet in that middle, you know? So, yeah. Okay. Well, Brandon, I was going to do more questions and ask you more, but we are out of time. So my man. question of how many children you're going to have, we'll have to wait till when I meet you in person. Yeah. Um, look, so guys, please uh, go find this guy. Tell them where they can find you. Uh, on Instagram, uh, my name is Brandon dot Slayball. And that's it. OK. And if it's not in the description, as soon as we hang up, you're going to text that to me and I'm going to paste it into the description. Yeah. And guys, leave a comment and tell us what you think is Russia in Europe. And yeah. tell us if we altered your mindset on this or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks thank so you, much. Thank you, Joe, for watching. You got it, Brandon. Thank you, man. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Good interview. Awesome.